together. Uh, notice God is always germane. He is always relevant. He always speaks to the need of the people that he is over. And that's why in a theocracy you have to follow the word of God. It is not a democracy. It's not an, an, it's not an oligarchy. It's a following of the word of God. It is not a monarchy. There is no king over here but Jesus Christ. And so it's critical because many times we fail to understand the word of God for the season. He speaks specifically. And he is saying then that uh, I, God, I don't need two Isaiahs. Uh, I can use the same to speak one thing one day and another thing the next day depending on what the people need to hear. Uh, that's one of our problems. We have told people what we know but not what they need to hear. But when God speaks, he speaks to a specific need because there is no revelation unless there is a specific need. God does not go around giving general revelation for folk just to figure out something for themselves. What God does is he deals with specific needs. And this is what makes him relevant. He is not just trying to bring you into understanding his identity if his identity doesn't mean something for your situation. Uh, can I take it further? Uh, I'm tired. I don't know about you, but you all look more tired than me. Uh, uh, let me take it further. He deals with identity because that is the crisis of the church. And if we maintain the identity of the last 25 years of health, wealth, and prosperity, we are going to become obsolete and we're going to become irrelevant to the present time. His identity is seen when he says to Israel and the substratum of God as he relates to Israel is I am that I am hath sent thee. And that's the question Moses asks. Who shall I say sent thee? Because they're living in a time of oppression and they have to be delivered. But not only do they have to be delivered from oppression, they have to be healed from the vestiges of the slavery that they were in. You see, Satan wants to control your mind and that's what he wants because it is through the spirit of God that talks to your spirit that God changes your mind and when your mind is changed you change your circumstance I want to take my time with this you know I can always hoop later as soon as Patrick gets it. let's go sit down Pat relax yourself uh, you see the mind can be delivered God can deliver you from trial and tribulation and take you out of it quickly he can deliver you quickly but he does not always heal you quickly because deliverance is an act of God but healing is a partnership you have to partner with God for the healing that you need for your system. And that's why in order to be healed, you have to walk in and listen to and practice the word of God. He is going to give you a word after you're delivered. And then you're going to walk in the word so that you may be healed. Because many people have been delivered, but they haven't been healed. Uh, let me give you an example as I move to talk to Israel. When God brought them out, and he always goes back to how he brought them out with a mighty hand. But he had a hope of his calling. He did not just bring them out to leave them on the other side of the Red Sea. He brought them out to lead them into the promised land. Now, if you remember earlier today, and I might deal with it in depth next week, and I just want my location to stay in your mind. If you remember today, I talked a little bit about an epiphany as a revelation. That is epiphany and revelation. And then I talked about promise and revelation. 
Now an epiphany is simply an instantaneous manifestation of God. It is a revelation that is brought by instantaneous uh, manifestation. Uh, Moses at the burning bush, if you remember, it was an epiphany. Uh, God on Mount Sinai, when he talked to Moses, was indeed, in fact, the greatest epiphany in the history of the scriptures. When God raised up Paul and sent him to the Gentiles, that was an epiphany. Here is somebody coming to you without you participating and bringing you a revelatory expression from God. Now, when Israel was delivered, when they were delivered by the hand of God at the Red Sea. That was an epiphany. But now he gives them promise. And that is now I'm going to take you to the promised land. The deliverance was instantaneous. Can again I talk to somebody here? Uh, Jordan just said a while ago how he was instantly delivered from crack cocaine. Now, he's instantly delivered from crack cocaine, but there are other things he has to partner with God to be healed from. Oh, I feel it here. I feel it. Uh, if that were not so, none of us would have to come to church after we were delivered. But in order for you to be healed, you have to grow into your healing. Uh, I want to take it further. Uh, without sliding anybody, I want to take it further. Uh, you see, Pharaoh was not Israel's greatest problem. Because by Isaiah 29, Pharaoh had thousands of years been dead. How is it then that God can miraculously deliver and people are not healed after thousands of years? Because you can be delivered, be delivered instantaneously, but unless you partner with God, you will never receive your healing. Uh, I want to preach this here today. Uh, don't get it twisted. Uh, uh, you see, uh, my testimony is my deliverance but my laborious fight is for my healing because I got to get off of my back all of the stuff that Pharaoh and Satan put on my back before I was delivered from God and the back right now is my mind because a delivered mind still needs healing oh, I feel like preaching here if you understand that in context of the walk then you will understand that the journey from the moment of deliverance to the promised land was three days then the question is how is it taking them 40 years to do a three day journey because if their mind was delivered when their bodies were delivered they would have made it in the three days prescribed but because their bodies were delivered and their minds were not delivered their mind was on a 40 day journey that their could have done in three days. Uh, I feel it here. Then I want to take you on the other side. They are now in the land and they're still not delivered. Can, can I preach like I feel it? You see, those who he is speaking to are not those who were delivered from Egypt. They were the family of those who were delivered. Uh, uh, how might I put it? The only two that got in after deliverance was Caleb and Joshua. And they became the fathers of those that he's speaking to in the book of Isaiah. Because it's the folk who came in from the wilderness who got in to the promised land. It was wilderness babies or the Joshua generation that got in to the promised land. The Moses' generation died except for two. You can be delivered and die in the wilderness. Oh, I feel the Holy